Test one, two, one, two, one, two. All right. Wow, we have uh, several folks on right now. Hey, give me a sound check view. I had a little bit of issue with my microphone, and hopefully the microphone is good to go. 15 people on live already. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Tina is already sharing. Good morning. Chris is on IDPA. Hello. Wow. Good morning. American Warrior Society. Ryan is on. Good morning. Montana is in the house. All right, folks, let me jump right into it because we're going to get to work here in just a second. Today is um, a little bit different live stream that I've been doing lately. For the last, oh, well, two months probably, we've been rotating through, um, you know, competition handgun, defensive handgun, defensive rifle. We did a carbine cycle. We did a low light cycle. And a lot of times those are very technical. So today I'm actually going back to old school, a little bit old school, what we used to call the DDC, the Daily Dry Fire Challenge where I did it daily at 6 a.m. for, I don't know, several months until I realized that was insane or crazy. And uh, so today we're actually going to be working some skills. I have a, a unique device I'm going to utilize in our training today. I've got a couple targets set up on the wall. And I'm hoping that you, if you're jumping on this, will be willing to do it with me. And if you're doing it with me or maybe helping moderate this, like you're watching the comments and you're just trying to learn as I'm doing the work and you know some of the other viewers are doing the work, and other people jump on the live stream, uh, you know, and ask questions. Hey, what's this knucklehead in a gray white shirt doing? What's he doing? Help me out a little bit. So if uh, uh, if you're new to this, folks, good morning. My name is Mike Seeklander. We're going to be doing some speed draw stuff. I'm going to give you some tips on speeding up your draw, and then I'm actually going to go through some repetitions um, utilizing an app I call Live Fire. Uh, by the way, in the description, there's a, a link where you can get a free 30-day access to Live Fire. I think the code you have to have is my last name. If you have a problem with that, we'll pull that, pull that up a, a, as well. Uh, of course, uh, before we start, uh, some housekeeping stuff. Please, no live ammunition if you are going to dry fire with me. So I have two magazines. You can see the magazines. These are very clearly painted dummy rounds, which is my recommendation for most of you. Um, these are some dummy rounds that I actually make on my loader. So these are dummy rounds where I go through an inspection process. They have no primer, but they're the same length and they're the exact same bullet uh, uh, profile as a lot of my competition ammo. These allow me to do some different things like slide lock loads and, and the bullets speed differently. So do me a favor and check if you have some dummy rounds on you or on your person that you have no live ammunition. Of course, I'm going to be using one of my trusty Wilson Combat 1911s. This is my single stack 40 because I'm getting ready for the single stack nationals here in about a month. Uh, I'm not wearing my USPSA gear today. I'm actually going to wear my IDPA gear because I know I'm live on the IDPA page. Uh, but this gun is unloaded and clear as well. I've got my beautiful Techwell system and Techwell grip grip system, which, by the way, they give a 15% discount code. Not sure if you can see that beautiful blue right there. So, um, so do me a favor and check and make sure you have no live ammunition or weapons in you, around you or near you. <clears throat> also, all safety rules apply. You know, if you are going to dry fire, make sure you're dry firing in a safe direction. Uh, make sure you're, you know, being uh, cognizant of your muzzle direction. Trigger should be, your finger should be off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. If you're not shooting, you should be touching that slide. Target backstop and beyond applies in dry fire to having something solid. So if you make the biggest mistake in the world, you're not going to fire around into your kid's bedroom or your wife's bedroom or whatever else. Um, so uh, all guns are always loaded. So please check your firearms now. If you're not willing to comply with safety, don't watch any more of this live stream Man, who do we have on? Um, looks like, hey, Scott is on. I know you got to jump on. Kip, good morning. Kip John from Oklahoma. Gilly is on. Alex, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Tony J, how are you? If you haven't shared this, by the way, give a share. David, James is on. Scott is on. Brian is on. Good morning. Good morning from Dayton, Ohio. That's outstanding. 51 live viewers. Diego is on. Hey, folks, if you get a chance, do me a favor. Put this in the groups and share it. Let the IDPA groupers know. Let my training addicts folks know, folks know. Someone posted in the coin members group if you would post it a couple times. Tell them, hey, we're about to work on our draw process. And today is it's kind of like the racing draw process. Hmm. I need more coffee. I've had this 
allergy thing, something in my lungs, a little bit under the weather, which is an advantage for you. So if you're racing me, I'm at a disadvantage today, right? I don't feel 100%. So you're gonna, maybe you could beat me today on these part-time standards. By the way, a couple other show sponsors. This is the holster I'm using. Uh, this is my USPSA rig. This is the fast holster made by Precision Holsters. That's my signature line. You can see the beautiful stars and stripes on that signature line. So that's actually the holster I'm wearing today. Right now, beautiful little thing. Um, and But I'm wearing my IDPA configuration today, generally speaking, um, in sort of a USPSA style kind of position, but it's actually probably IDPA legal. I won't be doing best stuff today because I don't want to go back from USPSA to IDPA. So we'll do no cover garment today for the draw process. And um, we'll get right into it. One last thing. I think next week when I jump on, I'm going to be bringing and showing you the Cool Fire Trainer kit. Um, if you haven't seen the Cool Fire Trainer, you can go to coolfiretrainer.com and check them out. Basically, if I had my gun converted, and the reason I don't have this one converted is because I'm about to leave to the range as soon as we're done and go shoot it. So I'm not going back and forth with it. Uh, but basically, you get a barrel and you get a recoil spring and then you take compressed CO2 and you fill up that barrel and the barrel has a striker in the rear portion of the barrel. And what happens is when you pull the trigger, the, the barrel, the striker comes out of this barrel and cycles your slides. So you get felt recoil. So if you haven't checked out the Cool Fire Trainer, you got to check them out. They've been one of our podcast sponsors for, for years now. I think I helped get them in front of a lot of uh, potential buyers, but they're fantastic in terms of being able to fire multiple shots. And I'm going to have one of those on probably next week or the following week, five following week's live stream demonstration. Okay. So, so here's what we're going to do. Do me a favor. Go ahead and click the share button a couple more times and gear up. So throw your holster on, throw your gun on. I know um, some of you out there are uh, my members. So you all should definitely be doing some work, by the way. And some of you, by the way, if you're like, well, Mike, I'm more of a, a defensive oriented person. I'm not into the competition stuff. Okay, let's put your defensive handgun on, uh, leave it unconcealed or conceal it, and just understand that you're probably going to be about three-tenths in time behind my part times if you are of equal skill. So that concealment garment or whatever else is probably about three-tenths in time at, a, at the most maybe 0.4 to 0.5 tenths. So if I've drawn and went click on my handgun, and, you know, a half a second later, a little bit less, you're there, you're running the same speed I am. So if you want to run your defensive gear, run your defensive gear. If you want to run your competitive gear, run your competitive gear. So when we do this, we're going to be doing this with the Live Fire app. Let me turn the volume up on this bad boy so you can hear it okay. Okay. So the cool thing about this app, I'm not sure if you can see it very well, is um, I, right now I have 15 reps set in. And I have a par time of two seconds, right? And I have a reset time of five seconds. So what that means is, uh, by the way, start delay is random. So it's going to give us a varying, varying starts. So the start time is going to be random. It's going to give us different delays. It's going to give us five seconds to reset. And it's going to give us 15 reps. So I'm going to start drawing on this next rep. And I'm going to use a little target in the background, right? And these are all about perfect repetitions. I'm really not trying to go real fast here. You know, I'm working on my index points, drawing the handgun. I'm working on perfect shots. My target is a third size target about uh, seven or eight feet away. There's a small thumbtack in the center of my target that I'm trying to hit, right? So that's, that's what I'm working through. So just taking my time. And remember, to speed up your draw, you want to think about a few things, right? You want to think about attacking the gun from the rear, right? Let me give you a little bit different light angle here. I have another chart over here. I want to think about attacking the gun from the rear in the holster. So I'm attacking the gun from the rear. Number two, I want to think about that index point where I'm indexing under the trigger guard, okay? I'm just trying to be perfect on my index points. And I want to make sure that I verify the alignment of the handgun. I'm not going to ever fire a shot unless I verify that alignment. Every time you fire a shot, here's a tip for you. Every time you fire a shot without verifying alignment, creating and verifying alignment, that's a potential bad rep you're myelinating in your brain. So there's a tip. Never fire a shot without creating alignment and verifying alignment. We'll talk about what that means here in a second. Let me see how more repetition. All right, I got one more. I'm going to do the last repetition, then we'll talk about this a little bit. All 
Okay, so that was a part time of two seconds, by the way. So the way the RPT on LiveFire works is when you're done, you'll get a done screen. And you can take a screenshot of that. A lot of times I'll take a screenshot and I will use that to log my, my logbook. So in the, in the logbook, I will go into the log and I will literally log, okay, dry fire drill. This is exactly what I did. The target I use, these are one third size targets. The distance to the target, if I have two targets, like for example, I did post one yesterday where I have two targets set up that are six feet apart and the targets are nine or 10 feet away. Right. So that's that's kind of how the whole app works. And I'm going to leave this sucker closer to the screen so you can see what's going on. Um, a few things I want to talk about real quick. And hey, Gerald, D's, good morning, by the way. John Rainer from Dallas. Hello, John. Billy Miller. Nice to see you. Joe L. from Pennsylvania. How are you, sir? Corey from Knoxville. Good morning, Corey. Scott, Tampa. I think I said hello to you, by the way. Hey there. Tony, Tony, share tiny, Tony, Gabriella. Uh, Ariana Caparelli. That's a great name. I love that. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So a few things that I want to talk to you about. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the part time. We're going to start going fast. I'm going to start uh, doing more talking less. So when I say, you know, attack the gun from the rear, I want to make sure that you're, you're driving. Here's a key tip for you. Drive that hand up the back strap of the handgun, right? And the key here is if I grab the gun directly from on top of the gun, I may hit the beaver tail. I may get too low on the grip. I may do different things that cause me to miss my draw. So when I'm actually grabbing the handgun out of the holster, I'm actually attacking the gun from the rear. So I'm driving the hand aggressively up the back strap of the gun. And then no matter what, I'm going to start to feel, or I'm going to create and feel that index point number one. So there's your tip. By the way, index point number one is when I feel the beaver tail or the tang, line up with the specific spot of, of the web of my hand. And I know because of how my vision works and that I'm left eye dominant, that if my beaver tail touches, for example, I put a little marker mark with that spot in the web of my hand, my sights are going to be lined up on target. Okay, so make sure you're feeling index point number one. And your tip is, you know, attack the gun from the rear. Don't come directly down on top of the gun. Attack it from the rear. No matter where your hands come from, attack the gun from the rear. So there's a little tip for you, okay? Joe Piazza from Florida. Good morning. And John Dalton is there for the Texas Three Gun Championship. John, you better kick some butt, okay? All right, so here we, we're going we're gonna to reduce this sucker just a little bit. So let's go down to a 1.50 time. And we're going to do another 15 reps of this, okay? This the reset time is five seconds. So I'm going to, what I do through this, I'm going to back away. I want to get a good practice session in. So I'm going to back away and I'm going to use a 1.5 second. And every one of these shots is going to be an A zone shot for you and I. So I'm going to tap the screen to begin, get set up in my stance, get ready to rock and roll. Okay. I'll take that one. I want to correct a couple things. By the way, when one hand moves, for me, I like to move both of my hands. Okay, both of my hands are moved at the same time. My support lot hand is going center line. There's a tip for you. Four fingers are going together. Because when my, my support hand goes center line, I'll give you a different angle here in a second. That allows me to chop into the trigger guard. Okay. The, the thing I love about the Life Bar app is I set my reset time. I don't have to reach down and set the timer. I can just completely immerse myself in the process of working. And by the way, that was a good example. My front sight was way to the right of the rear sight notch. And I fixed that and I fired the shot. Okay. A couple more repetitions here. These are not very fast yet, folks. Okay. Positional changes. Feel what you're doing on the handgun. Don't just see the sights. Feel what you're doing on the handgun. Shooting is a process of, of feeling what's going on, not just seeing what's going on. That was not a bad one. I need to grip the gun harder. Five more reps. Here we go. Learn from this process. Watch both hands move. Verify alignment. We'll talk about that next. I'll give you a tip on that. Three more reps. 
Man, I feel my balance on my heels that time. I don't like that. I'm going to fix that right now. Grip the ground with your toes like an eagle does, right? So I'm well ahead of the time at 1.5, and I should be, and most of you probably should be as well. So one more tip. I'll give you a quick tip. When I'm talking about verifying alignment, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, two, two things. You know, Rob Latham and I teach this class called the Bigger Circle Class together. And, and he, uh, the, this, the phrase came originally from him. I, I know about alignment, what that means. When we say alignment, I'm not talking about perfect side alignment. I'm talking about enough alignment to verify you're going to hit what you're trying to hit, right? So Rob always says, you have to create alignment and then verify alignment. And then to hit the shot, you have to maintain that alignment while you're pulling the trigger, right? That's it. That's all you have to do. That doesn't mean I have to have perfect front sight focus. We never ever say focus on the front sight. It means that I need to focus enough on the setting system that will allow me to verify the alignment of the handgun on the shot I'm trying to take. So, <clears throat> for example, you know, probably right now, my target is about six or seven feet away. The A zone in the target I'm using right now is, is pretty darn big. Like, it is much bigger than my sight picture <coughs> with my front side and my rear side notch. So to verify alignment, I don't have to have a lot of precise alignment. I don't have to have perfect front sight focus. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got something in my lungs. And I certainly don't have to have the front sight perfectly centered in the rear sight notch. Okay? So verify alignment means different things. All right, so we did 1.5. Good morning, by the way. <coughs> Um, so Ryan talks about that exactly. Hey, how are you? Lorian T. Man, sorry about that name, but I'm mispronouncing it. We have Doug Mays from Las Vegas. How are you, Doug? Chris L. How are you? Willis, good morning from Florida. Joey Russo's on as well. Chris Dewey is on as well. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, folks. So we work down to, and by the way, if you if you jump on Live Fire today and do a subscription, go ahead and follow me and send me a message on live fire. I just, I'd love to see you on, okay? So let's do this. Let's move this down to 1.25. Looks like Brad F just liked something I did. So now we're gonna move back down to 1.25 and we're gonna start pushing the speed a little bit. I might give you a little bit different orientation this time so you can see what I'm doing on the other side of my body, but pay attention to the app. All right, here we go. 1.25, we're gonna do 15 repetitions of 1.25. Oops, I missed that first one. Sorry, I'm kind of slow here. Here we go. Okay. Move the hands at the same time. Feel your index points. Now, this is a static draw. Of course, if I wanted to, I could add movement. You know, I could move left, you know. I could move right. You can do all kinds of different things, right? Whatever your variation is, just keep track of your times. <clears throat> all right, who's making 1.25 with me? Let's go, come on. Push a little on this. I'm hitting the thumbtack in the center of my target at 1.25. If you're not hitting your target at 1.25, then you're not going fast enough. Come on, move your hands. That was a perfect shot. I like that. I'll take that all day long. Keep working. That shot went a little bit left, but it's still a hit. And that's the that's a good example of verifying alignment, enough alignment. Want to switch your hand position? Well, do so. Whatever you want to do. So I need more work of that hands above my shoulders position. Attack the gun from the rear. Here we go. I think I'm starting to slow a little bit. A few more repetitions. Work at this. Learn from it. 
There we go. You want to start with hands on a barricade? That's fine. I switch my feet up a little bit. Hands on a barricade. Notice how both hands move together at the same time. Wait, I think I'm done. Well, there was it. Done. Once again, I'm standing like a knucklehead. Your Life Hour app will tell you when you're done with your 15 repetitions. Okay? So there you have it. All right. Let's see what I have on. Let's see if I have some questions. Hey, if you have some questions, by the way, throw them up there. 98 folks right now. Who can click the share button? Let's see if we can bust 150 today. Daniel from Phoenix. Please share, Daniel. David K. Oh, you have your intro to IDPA class. Very cool, David. Let us know how that goes. Daniel McGee. Good morning, Daniel. How are you, sir? Stephen S. Saxon. Louisiana's in the house. Mike Johnson says, cutting up small squares of three-quarter blue painter tape works great for small targets. Absolutely. I love it. 100%. 100%. All right. Who else do we have? We have a lot of people on, man. That's pretty awesome. If you click the share button, I bet we'll break 150. All right. Click share while I'm adjusting my live fire app. I'm going to give you a different profile. So here's the deal. Let's stop playing around. We're going to start picking up the pace. We're going to go with the 115. So this is a 115 part time. Uh, we'll do 15 repetitions. The reaction time is variable, and the reset time is five seconds, okay? So we're going to begin this, 15 reps. These all need to be good shots. By the way, here's another pro tip for you. If you're doing your dry fire with part-time on a timer, and you get to the point where you can't go that fast, like you're trying to race me, you're like, well, I can't keep up at 115. Don't sacrifice the quality of your gun alignment for the speed. Meaning, if you can do a 110 miss, that doesn't mean anything. Think about that for a second. If you can do a 110 miss, what does that do for you in a, a defensive or competitive environment? Nothing, right? You have to get the hits. And by the way, if you're just jumping on, good morning, folks. Here we go. 115 part-time using the RPT Live Fire app. 115. I want to back away a little bit far this time. Here we go. <laughs> that was fast. Woo! Here we go. I feel my hands moving really fast. I feel the need for speed. Where'd that come from? I feel the need for speed. By the way, I'm destroying 115. Come on. I hope you're working with me, folks. I really do. I'll do more of these part-time standards if I get people to do them with me. Because I can do them by myself. That's easy. Okay, I'm switching to headshots. Switching to a smaller target, sir. And that's a hit. Here we go. Index the gun, attack the gun from the rear. Stabilize, verify the alignment, fire the gun. Few more reps. Come on, work with me now. I actually reacted to the target that time, the, the screen of my iPhone visually. By the way, you can do that too. That's the thing I love about the Live Fire app is it shows a different color when it goes off. Come on, four more reps. Here we go. Let's work. That was a good hit, but it was the left side of the head. I don't like that. Come on, man. There we go. Two more, I think. That was a fast draw. Snatch the gun out of the holster. Move your hands. There we go. Boom. 15 reps at 115. Hey, by the way, I'm sorry I'm a little bit sniffly this morning. Looks like we have 88 people on right now. Charmaine is on. Good morning from Texas, Brian. Good morning. Pedro, good morning. 
What's a good speed reload split? Mm. I don't know, Pedro. Two second reload is pretty fast, but it just depends on the gear. Everything depends on the gear. Reloading from concealment, reloading what gun, reloading what mag well, reloading while moving or static. So you got to ask all those things, which is a great thing about it, you know. A logbook. I log everything in LiveFire. Not trying to promote the logbook function, although it's fantastic because you know tomorrow, okay, my reload was two seconds. I can do a, a reload of two second part time, right? Um, you know, start, stop. When we say part time, let me define that. If you don't know what that means, that means there's a start and stop beep. Total time means that the, the beep starts, you get the start beep, and then you shoot or do whatever as fast as you can. And that's a live fire drill. At the end, it measures your time. So I think some people misuse the per the term par right okay so mike johnson says he does dry fire drills with light ankle weights i like that they actually make boxer weights just like that where you can throw strikes and increase your hand speed i love that right okay uh billy miller move your hands like you touched a hot stove i'm all about that uh joe tip for regripping after a load just regrip like you always do right once you load the gun and we're not talking about loads today but i'll answer your question anyways once you insert that magazine, drive up index, regrip the handgun. For me, I release the slide with my um, slide lock lever. By the way, we'll probably do some par racing, par time reloads here in the next few weeks. I'm not sure what week. Okay. All right. Hey, hey, Rich Alice. Good morning, by the way. All right. Let's do this, folks. So that was a 115. Let's get stupid. So we're going to do a one second par. Okay. Um, so this is going to be one second. Okay. Um, tr try to make the time once again, don't forget if you don't, if you can't make this time, don't sacrifice the quality of your hits for the time. Then you just know I can't make that time. I made the 115 with Mike, but I can't make the one second time frame, which is perfectly okay. Um, okay. By the way, we have 87, 88. I think we maybe hit a hundred per second, which is weird. I don't get this. This should be a great subject. I would expect 150 people on. It seems like Wednesday morning we had 150 several times in a row. So maybe Thursdays are not a best day. Hey, if you have a comment about that, if you'd rather be doing these on Wednesday morning, let me know. I'd like to hear your comments, okay? All right, let's do this. One second time. Get to work. I was ahead of the par time there. By the way, if you're not moving fast at a one-second draw speed, you're not going to make the par. Attack the gun in the holster from the rear. Move your support hand into the optimum position to get it onto the strong hand once it comes out of the holster. Don't forget, there's a third index point. It's when your hands come together on the grip of the handgun. Drive the palms together. All right, I feel like kind of pushing my pace a little bit here. Get a little lower. Come on, put some, put some effort in here, folks. A few more reps. I think we've got eight more reps. That was a good shot. These are all good shots, by the way. Every single one of these is an A at the, the target I'm shooting at right now, or a zero. Either way, it works. That one was a little, a little bit high, but guess what? A high zero scores the same as a center zero. Five more reps. Come on. Do the work. Four more. Come on, three to go, here we go. Make these last two the best. Balance point shift, come on Mike Seaclander, you can do this. I'll take that. Yeah, so here's another pro tip for you. When I talk about index point three, I'm talking about how the two hands come together, right? So I can feel the curve of the thumb here. 
meet with the curve of this thumb, right? They should be pretty close to meeting and greeting together like piece of a puzzle. But most importantly, that tells me that my left hand is high on the gun and it's also in a position where I can clamp on the back of the gun. I am not taking my left hand and rotating it forward to try to put the thumb somewhere. I don't care where the thumb goes. Matter of fact, the thumb just kind of floats out there. If you look at my thumb, it just kind of floats, right? Because what I care about is the palm of the hand, driving the hand in here, okay? This, this palm is already there. So that's index point number three, by the way. Hey, if you have a question, throw it up. Take a break. Throw your question up. Joey says, ludicrous speed. Joey, you can do a one-second draw. Tiny says, miss the DDC. Maybe we'll do more of the DDC sometimes. Good morning, Jesse. Mad? Jesse Mad. That's an interesting name. Uh, Chris Jones, dry fire is cool fire. Folks, if you're watching right now, the app, it's uh, free for 30 days. Go to the App Store or the Google Play Store. Find cool, uh, live fire. Did I say cool fire? Live fire. Cool fire is the conversion kit you can use with your gun. I'll show you that next week. They're both awesome products, and together it's like dry fire on super amped up steroids. Here at the end of this, I'm going to show you how I might log my session. Okay. Daniel uh, asked about three index points. I will. I would love to go over three index points. Okay. So Daniel and uh, Scott, let's let's everybody just ask. Index point one is in the holster. All right. So I'm feeling where the gun is indexing in the web of my hand. That's index point one. Wrong, wrong, right. I feel where that makes contact. That tells me the alignment of my hand on the handgun the moment I touch it in the holster. Index point two is where once I've drawn the handgun, it drives by my support hand. My support hand is going to index, pay attention to the angle. We call this the Judy chop, trigger at index point. I'm, I'm indexing this direction and look at the angle. I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. So it stops and it rotates in. And then index point three is where the palm comes together and the hands meet. The corner here, the corner. So I feel my hands coming together. My thumb has already turned my safety off for your 1911 shooters. My hand rotates right in there, which tells me that my left hand or my support hand is in the right spot in the grip of the handgun. There you go, there's your three index points, okay? Um, so John says, during string of fire, you find your thumbs coming off the pistol. Here's the deal, I can care less where my thumbs are on the pistol. My thumbs don't control the pistol. My palms and my hands control the pistol. So John, I don't care about your thumbs. My thumb naturally rides my thumb safety because it's a 1911. But my thumb's just kind of floated point forward with my right thumb, right, on the safety itself. So don't worry about your thumbs that much, okay? Uh, Billy Miller, scoop draw. Looks really fast. Very easy to drop your gun. I don't know of any top shooters anymore that use an effective scooping draw. Manny Bragg did it for a long time. Frank Garcia taught it to me for a while. Frank Garcia, I think, maybe started the scoop draw. I'm not sure if he started. That might not be the correct term. But he was really, really good at it. Didn't work for me. I know there's a little bit of a speed difference in um, attack from the top draw. I'll take it all day long versus scooping and losing contact. And I don't get any of my contact points in a scooping draw. So not, not, a, not a good method for me, personally. Good morning, Christian. Rodriguez, maybe from Mexico, I think. I'm not sure. Um, you're welcome, Scott. Good morning, Pablo from Guatemala. The timer app name is the Live Fire. This timer I'm using is live fire. I'll do one more repetition. Then I'm going to show you all how, how I'm going to log today. Okay. By the way, I said we're going to get stupid. We're going to go. Um, we're going to do this. <laughs> oh, gosh. Is that even possible? Is it even mathematically possible to do a point ninety draw? All right, here we go. Point 90, do these with me, then I'll do a little uh, a logbook for you. Folks, sorry I'm all nasally today. I'm sick. I came and did this live for you sick. By the way, how many other pro shooters? Here's a question for you. 
and let's put this on Instagram. I have a little helper that does my Instagram stuff. How many other pro shooters are getting on live streams with you like this and working with you and teaching you for free? Go ahead, list them. Count them on your on your fingers. 90. Here we go. 29. We got to go fast on this one. Ready? Here we go. I beat the time. Woo! 90. You have to move fast if you want to do a point ninety draw. You have to move fast. Oh wait, if you're not getting your hits, you can't make this time. Don't don't do misses. Don't do bad stuff. I don't like I don't like that index in the holster. Feel what your hands are doing on the gun. There's your tip of the day. Feel, 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 feel. Come on, Mike. Move your hands faster. I'm constantly trying to correct and adjust. I'll take that one. Notice how the start time is different. It's different on almost every run. That's by design. I told the coders when they designed that, I wanted a variable start time. You can set it to a fixed time too. You don't have to have variable, but for me, I like that variable time. I'm going to the head now. Ah, that probably hit. That was a crappy shot. Come on. That was perfect. I love that one. That was my favorite one right there. My favorite. Watch me snatch the gun from the holster. Watch the hand motions and movements. Watch the violence of it. A fast draw is a very fast, violent draw, but not any unnecessary motion. That's what I'm working on. No unnecessary motion, folks. Come on, refine your draw process. That's it. Point 90. Done, right? So here's the deal. So, so I'm going to X out of here. So what I would do next is I would go over to my log, right? So I would create a training log. I'm going to go dry fire. And for me, I'm going to change the title of this, right? I'm going to go all the way over here. And I'm going to go static. Sorry, I can't see the screen very well. I'm old. Static draw. Hopefully I spelled that right. So I'm going to save the updates. I'm not going to share it quite yet. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to do my repetition. So I'm going to give myself 100 repetitions. My best part time was a 90. Oops. All right. So I'm going to go point 90. Okay. And I'm going to go done. And then maybe some notes here. I might go some notes and said uh, Facebook live practice. Um, I think I'm spelling practice right. Right. So I'm going to go done. So what I can do then is I can pick a picture of the pistola I use. Let me scroll down here. What do we have here? Sorry, this is kind of uh, slow, but I'm showing you how the sucker works. There's that beautiful little pistol. I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to share it to my feed. So if you're on live fire right now following me, you're going to see this pop up here in just a second. And then you can like it. You can like my little post. And if I, if you put something up, I can like yours. Or I could comment on your thing if you posted a video. Share it to feed. Boom. There we go. That's a, the true application of a social media feed for a shooter. right? Not scrolling on Instagram, posting the picture of your pink Glock with a weapon amount of light on the back, uh, on the hood of a pickup truck. How about that? How about we do some work? Like we do the repetitions. We do the work. Uh, then we post that on social. How about that, right? There we go. That's the Live Fire app. By the way, you get 30-day free trial. Um, it's pretty darn cool. Anyways, let's do some Q&A, and then I have to get off here. Um, what stand is that? Scott, this is just a cheap 
uh, Amazon stand. I don't even know what brand it is. You can look up tripods that hold iPhones and iPads. So a lot of times I'll just take my phone. I'll just set it up. You know, I'll go, I have a gym uh, next door. I'll just set it on a piece of equipment so I can see the screen as the, the live fire is running through my repetitive part-time function. And I don't even use an, a tripod. This I'll take to the range sometimes. It's just a cheapo tripod. So just, just buy it. Well, I'm not saying buy a cheap one, but buy one that'll hold your iPad. And by the way, I can run the, the, um, the device on my iPhone as well. Okay. Um, so Mike Johnson, one week, can you do a session on how you mentally prep for a stage? Yeah, Mike, we could talk about that, but I'll tell you, um, I'll tell you kind of what I do right now. And then you can ask more questions. So Mike, Mike's question is a good question. How do you prep for a stage? So here's the, the process of prepping a stage in a match. Number one, you got to recon the stage. You have to know the ins and outs. How many targets are there? How many total shots are there? So you don't miss a target or you don't miss a total shot. Once you know what the, um, the, the total targets or total shots, then you're going to look at your positions. And I look for two things. I look for stop markers and what I call stage markers. This is all covered in my competition hangout book, by the way. Uh, in, the, um, in the description on the live stream this morning or on Facebook, you can click on MikeCClanner.com and go to the ACSS membership. There's this whole process is in one of the programs. There are 18 programs in there. But I've reconned the stage. Then I look for stage markers and stop markers where I need to stop with my foot on the stage to see the targets I need to see and where I need to have the gun to be ready to shoot the target that I'm about to shoot, right? And then I'll come up with the plan. So how do I move through the stage? Where do I do my loads? Legal for USPSA, legal for IDPA. And I come up with the plan and then I visualize the plan and I run the plan in my mind multiple times. And a lot of folks ask, well, how many times? There's not a number. I'll tell you, if you took all the pro shooters over here, the best pro shooters in the world and they want everybody else, and you ask the pro shooters how many times they visualize the stage before they shoot it. And you said, hey, do you do it at least five times? All the pro shooters would raise their hand. Uh, the other shooters may raise their hand. If you said, do, do you do it 10 times? All the pro shooters would raise their hand. The other shooters, right, may not raise their hand. If, if you said 15 times, the pro shooters would probably raise their hand. The other shooters probably wouldn't raise their hand at all. How about, how about we, we visualize a complex stage until it's time to shoot? All the pro shooters would probably raise their hand. Everybody else would probably not, or very few people would probably not. When I say pro shooter, I'm talking about upper level shooters. So upper level shooters doesn't have to be a top level shooter. They that's what they do. And the only way to memorize the process is to do that multiple times. So there's a quick discussion on it. Um, ooh, Chris wants a DDC with a PCC. We might be able to do that, right? Um. Does Mr. Bain count as a pro shooter? Brian, I don't know. You'd have to ask Michael Bain if he counts as a pro shooter. Uh, Michael Bain certainly is a good shot. He can do some interesting things. He's a little bit – he's getting up there in age, Mr. Bain is, um, my former partner in crime on the best defense. And actually, he wasn't my partner in crime. He was my kind of my boss, kind of our boss. Unfortunately, we're not doing the best defense anymore. Mike Janich and I got, got the boot, right? <laughs> All right. You're welcome, Scott. All right. I don't see any more questions, folks. If you have a question, please. <clears throat> um, Guatemala in the house. Vinicio Flores and Vinny there, too. Good morning, Vinicio. How are you? How are you? Great, great, great. All right. If you have more questions, folks, throw it up here. I'm going to jump off here. Uh, in closing, if you were wondering about the app that I used, you know, the, 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 the repetitive part-time function, the Live Fire app, this is actually – let me show you the home screen, right? The home screen looks like that. Yeah, you're going to see my ugly mug. By the way, this is not my app. I don't own it. I am a part of it. I, I do have a portion of it. Um, they just came to me, and I helped them develop it, and I gave them a bunch of content. Because you can also see Mr. Ernie Langdon's on the app. We're going to have a bunch of other shooters very soon. They're building a studio in Tulsa that's going to be kick butt. Safety briefing. Don't forget to go to the safety briefing. You can get on for 30 days free. If you do... Uh, follow me and send me a message. I want to hear from you all that, that try this thing out. I want you to give me some feedback and tell me what you like or you don't like, and we're going to fix that. Because a lot of what you see was was uh, guidance directly from me. It's just a really effective tool, uh, and it's going to go to the very next level sometime in the near future. REAP, Tiny Tony REAP is the acronym. Reliability, ergonomics, accuracy, power. It has to be reliable. It has to have ergonomics. We're talking about a defensive pistol. That was um, his question. 
You know, can you reach the controls? Can you manipulate the slide? Do you have the strength to turn the safety on and off? Accuracy, is it, does it offer relative accuracy for what you're trying to do? Defensive or competitive? And then power, does it have enough power to do what it needs to do itself, okay? Cody, if you had the option, would you get rid of the IDPA vest? Ooh, that's a great question. Man, that's a great question, Cody. And I am in the in the company of the IDPA Facebook page. Here's here's what I would say that I think the the founders and the idea is if we're going to do a defensive sport, we should do a defensive sport that allow us to draw from concealment. I would I I have uh, I have I've recommended something that's very hard to pull off to IDPA. I, I know it's hard to pull off, and that is that we have a real carry division, like an actual carry division that in some way or honorable form, shooters can honorably wear their carry gun concealed like they would actually conceal it. Because as we all know, we all know that this is not how I carry my handgun. I don't carry my handgun like this and put a vest on. And I'm not saying that method of carry is not completely inappropriate with a little bit lower profile holster and maybe an open front jacket. I'm just saying that we know where it's evolved to. So would I get rid of the vest? I don't know if I would say I would get rid of the vest. I would say I, I would love to find an honest way to allow shooters to, to compete with their legitimate carry systems. But I can also acknowledge that IDPA would have an incredibly hard time uh, monitoring and controlling the, the gear. Because here's the, the deal with sport. All shooting sports evolve to the point where shooters are trying to get better and better at performing at their sport. It is a game. We have to accept that. So that's about the grayest answer I can give you because that's a really hard question, actually. Norgal Wasama, bro. I see you too, man. Um, Tammy says, practicing for consumer. I completely agree. I, I will shoot some IDPA matches this year, probably from appendix with my actual carry gun. Haven't figured out which one yet. I probably won't shoot the Nationals from Appendix. Who knows? Maybe I will. Maybe. If everybody else wants me to shoot it from Appendix and my carry gear at the Nationals, I would probably do it. And you, if you paid me $1,000, all of you. If all of you paid me $1,000, that would be $55,000 right now. I'll shoot my carry gear at the Nationals. The check would be mailed to my PO box. Um, Mike, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, yes. Uh, they did allow for appendix positions with very specific uh, requirements. They, they do. Okay. Um, Tina, you're welcome. Thank you so much for joining and sharing. Uh, Tina was on like first two minutes sharing, by the way. Ryan has three, he says, right? <laughs> well, maybe, I don't know, three, maybe make it 300. I would do 300 times 50 to shoot my carry gear at the Nationals, right? It might be fun. Maybe that's what I should be doing is leading from the front and forgetting about performing. But I can't beat... Nils or Mr. Rob Latham I'm shooting my carry gun. Just can't probably can't be done, but it would be fun, right? Um, Rich says, "Yeah, I know why you're saying that, Rich." Right? All right, folks, that's all I have. We didn't have a huge showing today, but I'm okay. If I have 50 people doing the work uh, and you like these Thursdays, let us know. We're going to analyze the numbers and make a decision. Sometimes I don't have a choice. Sometimes I do Thursdays because I have to. You know, this week, in the last few weeks, I could have done either Wednesdays or Thursdays, so I'm okay either way. If you don't have a, a desire or position on that, don't put a comment in there. And I'll close with the, everything you need for the Live Fire app is on the, the link itself. If you have a problem, DM me. Get in there. Send me a message. I'd love to, I'd love to see you. So anyways, folks, thank you. Stay safe. Put some work in. Do some additional dry fire reps. And until then, train hard.